You know, if you look around you right now, chances are you're seeing concrete. It's in our bridges, our buildings, our cities. It is literally the foundation of the modern world. But this stuff we think of as rock solid, it has a secret. A huge one, actually. So let's just get right to it. What is this fatal flaw that concrete's been hiding? It's this one simple word. Tension. Look, if you squeeze concrete, it's one of the strongest materials humanity has ever made. But the moment you try to pull it apart, it just shatters. It has almost no strength when it's being stretched. So, how on earth do we build massive structures with it? Well, we don't use it alone. We give it a partner. A perfect partner, really. And this hidden partnership is what's holding our world together. And this is where the magic happens. It's this beautiful synergy. Concrete, you see, handles all the immense squeezing forces. That's compression. Meanwhile, steel is incredible at handling the pulling forces. That's tension. They literally cover for each other's weaknesses. It's an amazing team. But what makes this partnership last? I mean, what's the secret handshake that makes it all work? It's something called thermal compatibility. As things heat up and cool down, both concrete and steel expand and contract at almost the exact same rate. I mean, think about that. Without this little bit of scientific luck, our buildings would literally tear themselves apart from the inside out. Okay, so now we have this incredible super material. But how do engineers actually use it to make sure everything is safe and, you know, usable? Well, they have to design for two totally different extremes. You can kind of boil it down to two main rules. First, there's the ultimate limit state, which is basically the won't collapse rule. Its whole job is to prevent a catastrophic failure no matter what. And then there's the serviceability limit state. I like to call this the won't annoy rule. This is what makes sure a building feels solid, no weird cracks or bouncy floors during everyday life. Now, what's really interesting is that not everyone approaches this balance in the exact same way. And that brings us to a tale of two different design codes. Just take a look at this. The standard for steel in the US can typically handle about 420 megapascals of force. But in Europe, that number jumps up to 500. It's not that one is right and one is wrong. It just shows a different philosophy, a different trade-off between building in bigger safety margins versus using materials more efficiently. So we have all this complex math, these different codes. How does all that theory actually become a real building on a real construction site? Well, it all comes down to something very, very real and tangible, like this. A single meter of a common 16 millimeter steel reinforcing bar, or rebar, weighs 1.579 kilograms. This is it. This is the physical backbone that gives concrete its hidden super strength. And all those incredibly complex calculations the engineer does, they get translated into a simple code. B1 on the blueprint just means bottom layer first row. T1 means top layer first row. It seems so simple, but getting this right is absolutely critical. Just putting a steel bar in the wrong layer can dramatically weaken the whole structure. So, the next time you walk past a skyscraper or drive over a concrete bridge, take a second look. Will you see just a slab of concrete? Or will you see the hidden partnership, that perfect team of steel and concrete, working together to hold it all up?